In this video we'll be discussing BenS application version 3.60 and 3.61. So let's go from the bottom up here. Um, the obvious things at the bottom added a high low pulse width measurement. What does that mean? What well, means is that the pulse width measurement is based upon the trigger slope selection. If it's a rising slope then it measures positive pulse width. If it's a negative slope it measures a negative pulse width. Fast sampling started out in real time and there were issues and eventually it was changed in 361. We'll get to that. Uh, what fast sampling means is that the, ref the refresh rate is much greater in the fast mode. It's an order of magnitude greater which means it's approximately 10 times faster refresh rate. So it'll help with people looking at the slow signals and they want a faster refresh rate to watch the changes. Okay, he changed the support for the DAT reference files I'm using strictly XML files now, which are much better. The reference waveform increased from 300 points to 1024 points. So now when you load a reference point, it's an XML reference point. And you get three times as many data points. Support the reference waveform resizing. We can now resize the reference waveform. Add sampling rate to XML profile section. What does that mean? That just tells you that what the sampling rate is. When you load an XML file, the sampling rate is part of the profile section. Set the DSL parameters on XML import. And what that means is, is the one above it says support loading of XML files for primary and reference channels. So if you load it into your primary channel, it automatically sets all the DSO parameters for viewing that file the same way that it was captured. And then as long as the nano is in a non-triggered condition, then you can go ahead and change VD, volts per division, and you can change time per division, various things, and massage that waveform while you're looking at it. So that concludes version 360 changes. Version 3.61 includes many, many features which are brought up through discussions with version 3.60. The exception to that is that Ben added the add option to reset to factory defaults. He did that by himself. That was really not discussed. So that was a good point that he brought up. Uh, there's going to be a lot of defaults in this nano as it gets more powerful. You have more option settings, I should say. So if you end up messing up all your option settings so they don't make any sense then the scope becomes unworkable. So he realized that he had to add a factory defaults reset function for all the option settings to get the thing working again if you mess things up. So that's one thing he did in version 361. He also fixed the issue with the fit when in fast sample mode and that's an in internal problem which we really can't discuss. Uh, adjust trigger position, subject to buffer priority. You know, we have priority equal and priority post. On well, the priority post position, many times the left side of the screen was blank, so he's taken action to automatically adjust the trigger position when you're in the post mode and reduce the blank to left side of the screen considerably. Add, add separate controls for buffer priority mode and fast normal sampling speed. So now he has a fast normal sampling speed, which allows you to use the fast mode, which gives you faster refreshes on any of the trigger modes. And last but not least, he met someone's request to invert the duty cycle when the measurement function is measuring the duty cycle of some particular score wave. So the invert the duty cycle works the same as the positive and negative pulse width measurement. It's dependent upon the trigger kind. If it's a positive slope, then it measures a, the positive portion of the duty cycle. If it's a negative transition, it measures the negative portion of the duty cycle. So that pretty much, much wraps up what Benef has done for us in version 360 and 361. Let's go take a look at the scope itself and see some of these functions in action. 
In this video, we want to look at a couple of things. I've switched to the Nano version 2 for this particular video. What I want you to always make sure you check is your vertical, your YA parameters, your Y adjustments, because your ground position, in my particular case, I want it to be at, I don't want it to be 10 positions off, I want it to be at, at 0, so I just hold the long OK. Now my ground reference is right here in the center of the screen vertically. Position zero. Press OK. Same way with vertical position. You want to make sure you know where it is when you start measuring things, or it could skew the voltage measurement you're trying to make if you're unaware of that. Having said all that, let's notice what we have here is uh, I've ported the output of the internal signal generator into the channel of the oscilloscope and I change the duty cycle. If we go down and look at the duty cycle, it's 91 percent duty cycle. Well, if we go up here to measurement, click OK, notice there is no duty cycle measurement. And the reason there's no AC parameters displayed here is because we don't have a trigger condition. Notice we've got a red trigger line all the time. So as you gain more experience with the scope, you got to always remember to set your trigger level to get a trigger condition because the measurements will not work without a trigger condition. So what we need to do is go up here and under TR, we need to adjust our trigger level down so that we get a trigger. Notice a green line. Move down. Now we have a locked up trigger. Notice now we're measuring 90.8%. So you can't forget your trigger levels just because you're using other functions. It's very important. Okay, now if we go ahead and change our trigger kind, you notice that right now we're measuring the positive alternation of the square wave. That's 90.8% duty cycle. If we change the trigger kind from rising edge to falling edge, now the measured duty cycle is 9.2%, which is the reciprocal of the other one. I should say the difference of the other one. So now we're measuring the actual negative um, the negative transitions are reference for measuring our duty cycle. Along the same lines, if we look at our pulse width, get my brain to work, Once the pulse width right now is 92 microseconds when it's triggered on a negative transition. So it's measuring this pulse width right here. If I change my trigger level, my trigger kind, I should say, back to the other kind, which is a positive transition. Now if I go down and measure the pulse width, 908 microseconds. Now we're measuring the positive alteration of the square wave, the positive pulse. So that's what was meant by those two features, pulse width and duty cycle. Measurements can now be switched for either alternation. Okay, here I set up the uh, nano. Right now the sampling speed is normal. Sample speed is normal. Looking at square wave, it's only a 10 hertz square wave, so I can look at it with a real slow sweep, 50 milliseconds. If you watch the trigger symbol up here, every time it triggers, it starts a new capture. New capture started. New capture's finished. Well, it's scrolling across the screen, displaying a new capture. And then they made a new capture. Now it's displaying across the screen, showing a new capture. So that's a normal mode. When I switch it to fast mode. Watch what happens when that acquisition is finished displaying. Now you notice our trigger function is always happening because it's happening ten times as fast if we're not really seeing it go off. So this is sampling approximately ten times more often than it was before. So it doesn't have all this dead time where it was just trying to paint the screen in slow motion. So if something was a fast-changing signal, this would be very handy. 
fast mode would allow you to see changes ten times faster than the changes you could see without it. So that's all I'm going to say about the fast mode. You have to use different waveforms and applications to get the true benefit of it. This was a simple way to show it, show it using the uh, internal signal generator. At this point I want you to notice all the variable um, options around the screen, display options. I'm going to load this primary. I'm going to load an XML file, this XML file, into the primary buffer, which is a capture buffer. When I load it, you'll see these parameters all adjust to that file once it's loaded. So I'm going to hold a long OK. Now it's loading that signal. And notice these parameters have changed now. They all match whatever the parameters were when the XML file was saved. Let me demonstrate that again. We'll load square wave file. And once again, if you notice, apparently this time when the square wave was captured in the XML file, I had an offset here. That's one thing I've warned you about already. My ground position was offset by 10 clicks. My vertical position was at zero. So once again, paying attention to these YA parameters, XA parameters, have become paramount with all the new features that we have. So if I go ahead and hold along OK, put the ground back down, I can see the entire waveform. So that's about all I have to say about loading the primary. We can also load the reference waveform from an XML file now. So let's scroll down here. We'll load the reference waveform. We use the sine wave to load that. Hold long OK. Now our sine wave is in our reference color. Our other waveform is in our blue color. So you can load them both from XML files. And it just uses, apparently it uses one fourth of the XML file in the reference buffer. It only loads a thousand, there's four thousand ninety six points, so sequence numbers I should say. So there's not all of it is here, but enough of it's here to be usable. Okay, I have uh, the same signal I had before. All I did is change the uh, buffer priority. Notice right now the buffer priority is equal, and the trigger point is in the center of the screen. If I switch the buffer priority to post, then it would have still been the center screen. It's all been blank to the left. So Ben F is automatically adjusted to trigger position over here to the left so that you can see the post data which follows the trigger position. And there's very little screen that would be blank on the left. Ours isn't blank because this, this is live data. That shows how the prior and equal it shifts the trigger position so that you get maximum benefit of the screen viewing space. And that pretty much concludes this lesson on versions 3.60 and 3.61. Enjoy.